I'm Seamless, and today we're in my studio in Chicopee, Massachusetts. The main reason I wanted to get into teaching was because I remember what it was like when I started out when I knew absolutely nothing about what I was doing. And there wasn't a whole lot of resources out there. When I began to make tutorials, I, the, my guiding principle has been to make tutorials that I wish I had. The last thing I want for newer producers is for them to not be able to make the kind of music they want to make because of technical reasons. I do think it is very important that sound designers have a grasp of the why of things. One of the defining elements of tutorials that seem to have existed before, that they tend to go like, here's the plug-in, turn knob here, turn knob here, turn knob there, and that's how you make the sound. And then you make the sound, but you really don't know why the sound is why it is, and that prevents you really from being able to do it again later, um, unless you just remember the sequence of settings you created to, to make the sound. From an early early on, when I was struggling with how to make my own sounds, I, I, I knew that um, if, if I could figure out the basics, the fundamentals of synthesis, of any kind of synthesis, that I could make anything with anything. It would be like really hard to do that in some cases, but I could still do it. Massive, I don't like so much because, because if it's locked down like nature in terms of how you use the wavetables, you have only so many of the wavetables that there are, and that's how you start making every sound. Which is not to say that you can't do traditional subtractive synthesis with it, you know, because it has just regular waveforms in there, in the tables, and then the usual filters and distortion and effects, that kind of thing. But what ends up happening is that people will make sounds that are similar to much more complicated processes, but they'll do so having had the work already done half for them. And from a sound designer's perspective, that kind of irks me. From like a composer's perspective, a, a just regular music creation. I don't particularly mind it, but uh, when it comes to designing sounds, it's kind of where I focus, so that's not, I don't, don't particularly enjoy. I'm, I've, I've recently taken a stance that I really don't care if people use presets. And again, it's all about making the kind of music that you want to make. And for me personally, it's about making ridiculously complicated sounds. <laughs> I'd say the biggest advantage is how open FL is as opposed to the streamlined nature of other other uh, solutions. When I when I say streamlined, it's mostly that they have a specific idea about how they want you to use their software, and you are mostly presented with that option as being the quote unquote correct way. Whereas FL Studio, they they give you the option to kind of go about it however you want, and that's what I, I primarily like about it. For more information on sound design, synthesis, and music production, you can check out my course on uh, Creative Live.